So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Sandra, who's right here, who had. She told me that she had her seven children. Six. six oh, sorry, six children taken by the government. Yes. Since That's 2011. Correct. That's correct. Yes. And. Yeah, our children were taken, uh, like said before, because of the stand and fight for treaty rights and against the exploitation of the natural resources. Um, we, st we stood up for the rights signed in the treaties, like the two Rowampum treaties, which is the original treaty that gave the settlers the right to live in this land. And it was agreed on that they would live according to their values, let us live according to our values, and we would not interfere with each other. And so based on this treaty, that is our fight for a future for our children, that they are allowed to live as who they are, grow up knowing who they are and what it means and what their responsibility is. Like our responsibility to protect this land for the future generations, which the tar sands, pipelines, mining, nuclear industry, all that is interfering with. And the treaty, the treaties that were signed actually gave the settlers a right to use the land up to a blouse death. Uh, none of the nature, natural resources are within that perimeter. Everything is deeper, obviously, which does not give Canada any right and any title to these natural resources. And this is what our fight has been, to secure a future for our children. And that's why when we were told by the court system to drop our political fight, we've made it perfectly clear that it's not a political fight, it's a fight for a future for our children and all Native children. And that is what we want. And now you're fighting to get your children back? Yes, we are still, we're still at this point trying to at least get access to our children, which were taken in Alberta. We are trying to... Uh, we are hoping that they could be connected to their people and live with their people and we are also still, Amanda and me both are trying to get the children that were taken in Ottawa. We are trying to get them back can into our custody. Can you explain to us, sorry, sorry I cut you, but can you explain to us the reason why they, they took your children, because we understand in Alberta you have a fighting with the government, the provincial government, but why do they took your child in Ottawa, in, 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 in Ontario, what uh, was the reason? Well, in uh, Alberta, issued a Canada by born, I gave birth to my now 19-month-old daughter while I was going through custody trial for my children in Alberta. And um, the father of the children, we, we agreed on that the father of the children would take my daughter straight back to Ontario to secure her treaty rights to connect her with, the pe with her people and so he took her right after birth and so Child and Family Services issued a Canada-wide warrant. Because of that Canada-wide warrant they raided our house at least eight times in Alberta and also went to the local reservation where I gave birth and took all the newborns that had been born within a two weeks time period of me giving birth. They took all those children as well and as far as we have heard the parents have not get, gotten their children back. And they also, we had filed, as Amanda mentioned, um, a Section 35 treaty application, and they have used, they have denied that. We have been told Alberta did not sign any treaties with the Mohawks, and treaty rights do not exist in Alberta. We were declared uh, domestic terrorists by the court system, and the courtroom was cleared when we would come up. And, um, our case has been used since to seize more treaty status native children. Uh, it has been quoted as a precedent setting case so that now they can circumvent a big lengthy trial and if the parents claim treaty status they can just vote our case and take the children permanently. And so in July 26th of 2013 uh, my now back then seven month old daughter was taken. It was a fairly lengthy standoff because, of course, the father refused to give up the eighth child of this family. Um, it ended with the police throwing concussion grenades into the room where the father with the baby was, and with that taken custody of the baby. What is the next, like, what would you like people to do to help you out? 
Well, first of all, we would like to raise awareness of, because we are obviously not the only case, we are not the only family that's going through that. We would like people to get more knowledgeable about the native plight, about the native issues, about the missing and murdered women and children, because these are the hosts of this land, and it is our interest to share this land with all the people. But we would like our rights and our values to be respected, so our children to have a future like all the other children coming to this land. We want our children to have a, the right to a future with our values and growing up not to have to be ashamed of who they are. So you would like people to, to, to go on the link below this video? We have a link below this video. There is a petition that is calling for an inquiry into the practices of child and family services. Uh, we would be, we would appreciate very much if you could sign the petition. We can appreciate any help with funding, any legal advice you can give us, any connection. We are happy to do more interview, provide more detailed information. We have lots of court paperwork, transcripts to show. Thank you. So any help we appreciate. Thank, Thank you. you. Sandra.